interesting uh, topic and please don't call me, don't say that I have called you anything because I don't intend to call anybody anything. But um, I'm having a message of, uh, with a theme, avoid doing what is foolish. Eh? Avoid doing what is foolish. Because in, a, in, a, in the chapter we have read, uh, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 8, uh, the Bible says this word, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. We are not the Cushites, the Libyans, a mighty army with the great numbers of chariots and horsemen. Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord reach throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on, you will be at war. Avoid doing or committing a foolish act or foolish thing. Amen? Can I hear amen? Amen? It's a beautiful topic. You will love it. I also love it. It's hard for me. It's hard for you. It's hard for everyone, but it's a beautiful, beautiful message. I have been on this theme, on chapter 15, verse 7. It has been a theme that ushered us as a Seattle pastors and our community to a new season. And we are saying, but as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. That has been the theme that I've been um, uh, working around these three chapters uh, over these three weeks uh, since we had the solemn assembly. and. Um, Maybe in one more lesson, maybe bring to a close, but we continue to experience the new season the Lord has given us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, enable us to be wise in whatever we do and to avoid the mistake like the one or the error that the one Esa did, even in the, his life, days of his life and, and, king, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and kingship, dear Lord. And I ask dear Father, not to act that way, to deviate from your will, but to continue strong each moment, because we know our works and our service will be rewarded. So bless us in this word, because we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, if you ask a question, what is foolishness? You know, what can you answer somebody when he says, uh, define what foolishness is? is all about. Foolishness is the opposite of wisdom. It's going astray from, uh, from the behavior or from, from the norm. You know, it's simply uh, going astray, falling off from what is normally the right thing to do. Somebody has said, again, foolishness is simple stupidity. You know, lack of good judgment. You know, when you lack good judgment in whatever you do, you are called stupid. I mean, and it's not a good word to call somebody stupid. No. Proverbs has um, said uh, um, in chapter 14, verse 17, that uh, a quick-tempered person acts foolishly and a man of wicked intention is hated. And even verse 16 says, A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. So you being hot-tempered, somebody has said uh, with no valid reason, do not be a hot-tempered fellow. You can do something silly. You can do something that you live to regret. And even the one has said, do not lose your temper. Not, nobody needs it. Nobody is going to take it. Do not lose it. We don't need it. It is you who need it, so don't lose it. Hold it to yourself because no one needs it or no one will take it. Being foolish again is thoughtlessness. Like the Galatians. In Galatians chapter number 3, the Galatian churches in chapter number 3, the Bible says, you begin with the Spirit of God. You begin well, you Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Actually, the, the very first verse in chapter 3 starts with asking them, Oh, who foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you 
Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you had? Are you so foolish? Now verse 3. After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Are you so foolish? You know, we shall come to define what biblical foolishness means. It's all about. But Galatian churches were so blessed. They had received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They had received the gospel. They, are pri they were privileged to receive this good news from the Lord, from the Lord Jesus Christ, preached by Paul and other men and women of God. But now somebody else come and try to, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, yeah? distract them from the path of faith. And now, because of that uh, deviation, Paul is referring to them as foolish people because you are living what is so good and going to that which is vile. That can never build your spirit or your lives. So he is, he is asking them, you guys, you began with the spirit, with the Holy Spirit. Are you now adding in the flesh? And we'll explain there later what he here fresh is all about. They are being told now or being cautioned. You are leaving eternity to go to hell. You must be foolish people. You are leaving spirituality to go back to carnality. It's utter foolishness. Jesus called the Pharisees and the scribes who were not hearing what he was saying a spiritual brightness. When you are bright, when you cannot see when you cannot perceive with your mind, with your heart, what the Lord is saying, the scripture or the Holy Spirit, like we are reminded here on Sunday, refers to as a spiritually bright person. And we need to open our eyes. Can I hear amen? All of us need to open our eyes so that we can see what the Lord is saying and doing. Currently, like now, I was telling some guys, we were with them yesterday. The Lord is using young people. There's a wave. Leave the Delta wave. Hey, don't talk about Delta wave so much. Talk about the spiritual wave. Hallelujah. You know this choir that is singing Moyo Wangu? Have you seen that choir that sings Mo, Mo, in his. In answer, Moyo Wangu. Sasa, ni megundua, wimbo ingine, manasema. Una, una, ni Zairian, see? You know that song I played yesterday like a nobody business. When I have got simple two minutes, my earphone sit down and you can hear and you can feel, you can tap the anointing. And when you look at that congregation, it's all young people. There are only, only two or three people who look like myself. But the rest are young people, even those who are married, they are young reading worship. And that worship can be felt across the globe. You guys, you have got the potential to change the world. Hallelujah. The way Delta variant or whatever COVID is, has done in the one year, you can have opportunity, and I will come to that. The seeds that we are planting of the kingdom of God are able to, to make you and transform you to become agents that will change the world to eternity. This is, the, this is our take. This is our position in the Lord. Leave us already who are old. God, I saw, me, I would feel that, God, you are using young people. spectators. Be part of the team. Be part of the party that God is raising in this state and in the world to change the world. Ah, come on, somebody. Praise the name of the living God. That does not be spiritually blind. If your life have not been taken, if you don't find your name on the obituary, God has got a purpose for you today. Not only for today and for tomorrow and to eternity. Buona sfere, son. Do not be spiritually blind, my brethren from KCC. Let us be also be spiritually awake and open in our minds. That the Lord is using young people. 40 to 45 years, 35 years, I, it is a, even younger than that. It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. 
Foolishness is deny or rejection of God. In the psalmist, uh, Psalm 14, verse 1, the foolish one says in his heart or in her heart, there is no God. And it's also repeated in, in Psalm 53, this foolish man says, or this foolish woman says, that uh, there is no God. Eh? They, how, how dare can somebody say that? How dare can he? Can he explain to us how he survived nine months in the mother's womb if there is no God? Can he explain to us? If he is able, then we can believe him. But leave those nonsense out because the Bible says here, uh, chapter 50, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one that does good. Do not be a fool who will say in his heart or her heart, there is, no, there is God in heaven. Daniel said there is a God in heaven. And Nehemiah cry, also proclaimed there is a God in heaven. My God, our God, the God of our fathers, the Holy One of Israel. It is foolishness to think or perceive or even to imagine that he does not exist. He exists. He keeps the oceans. These vast waters over here and other places, the whole Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Antarctic Ocean, all those oceans, two-thirds of this world is water, but the water cannot reach us where we are because of the balance God has given us. Hallelujah. The sun loses during the day. It is so hot that if, even if the sun comes down, if there is, the sun will not come down, but if the earth deviates even an inch, the heat wave that we, we had last in June was just uh, uh, like a toy. You can experience what heat waves can all be. And even this state is known for fighting crime, climate change because of what mess people are doing. God is alive. And God is active. And God is moving. You know, I mean, can somebody say amen? Biblical. How the Bible describes foolishness is largely that denial of God. Hardness of heart. In Psalm 95, we are said, when you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. Do not make your heart stubborn or hard to listen. Soften your heart. Respond to God the way you respond to your employer. And the way you respond also to your, to your, to your shift. If somebody says, Pastor, you rush there quickly. Because you don't use that shift. If you can act that, if the doctor tells you, you take two, two, two tablets twice a day and you obey that and he is not seeing. If you can, why do you keep so hard, being so hard in your heart, feeling that if I get saved today, I will fall. We have not fallen. We got saved when we were young men. And the Lord has seen us through. Hallelujah. Yes. Do not continue being hard at heart or unbelief, or continued stubbornness against what the Lord says, or what he is revealing. You must be spiritually sensitive. Young people, you know, John wrote in John chapter, in 1 John 2, it's only one chapter, but one verse says, I, I am happy, I rejoice because my children know the truth. Hallelujah. One as well, son, the Lord is revealing great things in our midst, and especially to the young people. May God forbid that we can be counted such people. May God forbid that we can be called all oh, foolish KCAC or like foolish Galatians. You started in the spirit, now you are adding in the faith. May we not be in that category. Come out of such category. Get into the right category. What God will call you or he will be falling you to be. Can I hear amen? Buona sana. Let us not be these people that are falling into this category of deviating from the ways of God and following things that are pervasive, things that are destructive, things that will not even help them, they cannot add value to their lives. Let us not be foolish like foolish Galatians. And one example of a foolish person is this king in where we have read, King Asa. He started well. He started well with God. When you read chapter 14, he was actually a young man. He started being a king, being a young man. You know, uh, Abijah 
in chapter 14, and Abijah arrested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. As his son succeeded him as king and his days, the country was at peace for 10 years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. This man, King Asa, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He actually took over leadership when he was a young man. Actually, at almost like a teen, he started well. When you read chapter 14, verse 2, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And even when he came to war, he prayed a lot. You know, as in verse 8, verse 14, chapter 14, Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah, equipped with large shields and with spears, and, two, and 208,000 from Benjamin, armed with small shields and with bows. He was a leader of a nation of Judah with only two tribes. And he had a small army, but he called them brave fighting men. Look at what he was facing. Verse 9, Zerah, the Cushites, marched out against them with a vast army. And when you look at that vast army, it is called thousand upon thousand. What is thousand upon thousand? So he had a million, enemy, a million army facing 300,000. Can you defeat such an army? You are already, the, the job is done. You are defeated before you start. But God gave him victory when he prayed this prayer. Then verse 11, then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the power, the powerless, against the mighty army. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you. And in your name we have come against this vast army. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. And verse 12 says, the Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. He struck them. He defeated, he fought their battles. So Asa had experienced victory upon victory. Even when he was outnumbered by the Cushites, one million against 300 army, God delivered him. And more so in his, at the five years of, of his reign, the Lord had granted the nation peace around it until the 36th year when Asa chased course. Something normally starts with a start. There is always a point of starting or a point of deviating. You have come a long way and then you deviate. You have served the Lord so well and then you deviate. You have kept your marriage so intact and glorious and working until you deviate. You have been studying so well in college until you enter that company, that relationship. It starts, you start deviating. Until the 36 year, he deviated from the course of following the Lord. And I'm asking you in this service, have you changed your course? Or are you being tempted to change your course? Have you changed the course you have taken in following the Lord? Or are you being tempted? And I was saying here, in the name of the Lord, brother, sister, start firm. Do not defeat. Do not, there is nothing, there is nothing better than what you have already believed all this time. Buenas Fesana. Do not, do not yield. Do not yield to this, to whatever may be attracting you from deviating from the right norm. Whether you're a young person or an old person, foolishness is costly. If there's something costly, it's foolishness. And here we are not talking about mentally handicapped person or mentally challenged. We are not talking of somebody who has been born with a mental challenge. We are talking of sane people. We are talking of people with degrees. We are talking with people with families. We are talking with people with jobs. We are talking people in this country who have got visas who have got green cards and citizens. We are not just talking about people that you would think they are, they, are, they, are pulling, they are putting ashes on their shoulders or walking with a tatter. We are talking about smart people with ties. Foolishness is costly. Even one man has said, if you think education is costly, try ignorance. Try ignorance one day. And you realize that ignorance is more costly than education. 
Asa folly. In chapter 16 where we have read, Asa deviated from the walk with the Lord. He deviated from the covenant relationship he had with God. What does the covenant relationship mean here? It means when you are in covenant with God, God will provide for you. God will meet all your needs. And Paul says in Philippians, he will meet you according to his riches in glory. He will meet you. He will meet your need. If it's a husband, he will meet that need. If it's a wife, he will meet that need. Not just to eat or to grow. He will meet your needs, spiritual needs and physical needs. Bonus if you will. He will meet them according to his riches. Do you think God is so, is so poor not to provide a good wife or a good husband? Come on, give me a break. Do you want to try me? At the mungu ni 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 fukala vire shetani diya na peana ha wana kujja wana pana. Give me a break. If it's he will provide his Jehovah Jireh. He will fight your battles. He will fight every one of us do her battle. All of us, we are in a war. If you never knew, we are in a war. But God will fight our battles. We have seen in chapter 14, he fought the Kushites, a million army, and he defeated them against a mere 300 world numbers of, 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 of soldiers. He will win by few or more. He does not, God does not care how much or he is not scared by how vast an army is. He is God. He is almighty. He is everlasting. He is a king of kings and nothing can scare him. So when you are on his side, you are praying in the light team. You are praying in the winning team. Bonus for sana. God, you provide. You will fight your battles. Of course, even the present worship have sung. He is our healer. He is Alpha and Omega. There is no disease, not including COVID, that he cannot that cannot heal. There is nothing that God cannot deliver our people from. Hallelujah! Nothing. He will grant us victory. He also grant us rest on every side. Some people may be troubled, may be having a lot of issues in their lives, but God will give you rest. Augustine have said, our soul will never find rest until it's find rest in the Lord. He is the one who grants us rest. He granted us a rest for that five years on every side. Because the Lord had created a hedge of protection around. But, hallelujah. But now, sometimes when you are faced with a challenge, and I will be coming to that, when you are faced with a challenge, the king, northern king called, uh, called uh, Basha attacked and uh, he started building a, a kind of a war and some cities around Judah. And somehow, um, uh, Asa got scared and thought upon himself, ni watu wale wanasema wanachora. Eh, watu wanabawa wanachora, akachora. Akaona, hii jamaa hu dugu yangu, eh, 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 kiongozi mwenzangu amekuja uh, kuni eh, kuni eh, kuni attack eh ku invade my land so what i will do i will shut up but uh, in the verse four, chapter 14 he inquired of the lord instead of inquiring from the lord he bribed a heathen king with the treasures of the temple hiyo ndio ilikuwa mtoro wake and he told king ben hadad do not break your treaty with the Basha and come to my side. And when you come to my side, then we shall scare him and uh, fukuza yeye or throw him away. You know, it's just like, it's just like uh, two cows. Two cows. One cow say, uh, I'm being attacked by my, my fellow lion. Come and scare these two cows. And then you become my friend. How can there be friend between a lion and a cow? No, there can never be. So Ben Hadan is a heathen king. He does not believe in Jehovah. He is an idolater. And he is dangerous. Yes, he was becoming big and his influence was growing or a powerful kingdom. But he was to become a prey to both Judah and Israel. He was to become a prey. He was to become a trouble or an, a, 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 a source of uh, a source of sin or a sort of defilement to a covenant people. Therefore, God is asking Asa, was not, was not the, was not the Kushite stronger, was not 
the Kushite stronger than anybody else. Could God, could, could, God could have granted Asa victory like the way he had given, he had granted victory over the Aramites or the Kushites and the like. He deviated from the path of a covenant. He was deceitful and he, he did not trust in the Lord. And in that sense, he lost on both sides. Esa allowed paganism to infiltrate the nation of God and had disastrous results throughout the succeeding centuries. So when you do an, an act, a foolish act, the, the consequences are not there. There, Some are a lifetime. They don't add. They will hold you throughout your life. So from now on, he was told, from now on, you will be at war. You will be at war from now on. Because I'm allowing paganism or heathenism to come to this covenant nation and to your leadership, the war that I was fighting for you, you will fight them and you will not win. And I was asking here, does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Doing a foolish act and then it starts, uh, another journey starts of chaotic life. Does that sound familiar? Go to a dance. Go to a dance. I don't know why people keep organized dances at night. What do they, why don't they organize dances during the day? <laughs> why do they people, we had a beautiful wedding here, and we also blessed people. Now we have come over and we have come over me, Nye de mta ide wa shemeji kama shemeji yule yuko pale nyuma ni tena da kwa dia one two three and then after everything has been done and the way we were smart and the way we sang da la 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 then come nine pm ten pm you go and seek those guys we are in church so solemn and pious guy you find them in a different attire in a different situation. And what is served there, not, not sane food, is food that is intoxicating people's mind. Then a guy will come and fight uh, this one dancing. I don't want to mention anybody here so that you know. And then somehow you slap or you fight. And then you then somehow you slap or you fight or you fight this guy. You fight there. Then policemen are caught. You start off a light. You live from fun to hell. <laughs> you start a hell kind of life from then and forth. Because you'll be told, can you report this to this station? Something and very unfamiliar with you. From pressure to ruin. From pressure to ruin. What do you think you could have made you happy? You start ruining your life slowly and slowly. Doing a foolish thing is costly. It brings with itself disastrous consequences. If you are a woman, you contract, you procure a pregnancy. And then you kind of say, I will take it away. I will get rid of this fetus. Then you start off, start a lifetime of being haunted. If you are ready, don't abort. Keep that pregnancy. Do not throw a living being out of your it is the, the act you did was wrong, but the child is innocent. Don't kill. Keep the child. I, I cannot be here, amen. No one really aborted he was giving a testimony. And um, of course, you caught other children. But um, she was say, telling us somewhere, and then she would say, please help me being delivered out of this, and being haunted by this, this child I aborted. Because the, 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 this boy will come during the night. He will come in a dream, in a vision. A beautiful boy! Wonderful boy! You come at night, and then she's asking, Mom, Mom, why did you kill me? Why did you get rid of me? So girls, stop this game and avoid this nasty and nonsensical situations. Keep yourself pure and move forward. 
I cannot hear amen. Involve yourself in a fight. As I said there earlier. And you enter police books. You start another kind of life. Police things. Drive under the influence. Of whatever it could be. Or even while you are texting. When you are driving and you are texting. And then you are caught on I-5. You are charged a hundred and something. And some other issue situation follow. Foolishness is an act of wickedness. After 20 years of salvation, you know, you act silly or you act in a foolish way. And what has been right and pure for 20 years become even worse when you backslide, become worse more than you were there before. Matthew, 20, Matthew 12, 43 says, when an evil spirit is driven away from one's heart, it goes and seeks other seven. And when it comes back, it finds that in this heart it has been swept clean. And what is, is that heart which has been good? When they come to seven, your state become worse than the first. Do not backslide. Even as a church, I was saying here, even as a church, having enjoyed spiritual breakthrough and the wonderful things we have witnessed over the time, then we deviate to wicked or foolish act. We may become worse than we were started before. We have come a long way as KCC. We cannot afford to deviate from what we have learned and the journey we are making. Praise the name of the living God. I'm saying avoid that company. Avoid that relationship. Avoid such places. Avoid honoring that date. Avoid that honoring that date. If you are conscious, and thank God for a living conscience. If it's telling you, do not go. Don't honor it. Find something else to do. <laughs> you know, one time when we were in form, I think form three, our, our teacher came one day. He was not born again, but he was staff on us. Mathematic teacher. He was said, he told us, if you have nothing else to do, read your Bible. He talked sarcastically. He talked sarcastically to us. Uh, but I took this hymn seriously. If you have, the Bible is not to be read when you have nothing else to do. But, but if, if your conscience tells you and it is warning you, read your Bible. <laughs> go, go, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's go there with me. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. The Bible says these words. <laughs> you just take your Bible and read verse 12 if you are going for a date and you know it's not right to do that it is not right everything is permissible for me every one of us is permissible we are human beings I am a man yes I am a man and she's also a woman you know it's permissible that's what Paul is saying and everything but not everything is beneficial. So you tell your mind, whatever I am being called to go and do, it is not beneficial to me. So I don't go at all. It is not one this is the Bible. But I will not be mastered by anything. Don't be mastered by anything. Do not, do not answer errors that are not beneficial to you. Do not enter into a situation that is not adding value to you. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will destroy both. The body is not for meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute or a harold? Never! Do not join yourself into illicit situations. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a, let me not call her this way because it's a, we are not, with a funny lad, is one with the high in the body, for it is said, the two shall become one flesh. You know, you may not be having the wife, we have blessed you here. You may be having like 10 more. You need to be delivered. <laughs> because the Bible says here, the two shall become. One. You shall become one. 
And so, but he who unites himself with the Lord is one in with him in the spirit. Free sexual immorality, all the sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own, own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God. You are not your own. So you convince, I am not my own. I belong to the Lord. And because I belong to the Lord, I honor those appointments that are honoring my master. Why? In verse 20 it says, you were bought at a price. Therefore honor God with your body. If whatever you are called to do does not honor God with your body, don't honor that because you are bought with a price. Cannot hear amen. I don't know how you take even this one. Do not touch. Some in this country is starting to be sexual assault and can hurt you that a year later. You know, you, some of us, you be governors. Young men here, you got potential to be governors of, West, of Washington State. Or even more, some of you, you'll be secretaries of states or secretaries of various ministries in this land 30 years from now. I can prophesy that. I can attest. I, what is this big word I can say? I can reliably or favorable prophesy that. Can I hear amen? Yes, some of you, you become. But you know you are also vetted. Before you take the position, you are vetted. And then women will come and say, he touched me here. He touched me at the back. He touched me at the... My goodness. And then you start fighting. There's not a country you can bribe anybody. You lose. So keep your hearts away. You know what? Keep your heart to yourself. If you are so pressed, put them in your pocket and start hammering. Sit down and come away. Where did your brother want to go? He touching. There is a guy now in this country in trouble. Very prominent guy. And he is causing havoc. Because he, some people have come and said, you know, he touched me. It is not even serious. Or you may see serious. You know, we greet people by the side. And then maybe you press her a bit. You say, oh, I have noted that. Wait until you are being appointed. <laughs> then you start saying, I was in church in KCIC. Eh, you remember you touched me at the, at the Baru Hapa? Eh, that was sexual harassment. Keep your heart to yourself. If you cannot go and pray <laughs> or read your Bible, <laughs> it will save you. <laughs> it will be safe for you. <laughs> then to don't touch. <laughs> Keep your hands and the legs and your body away from foolish things. Stop these nonsenses. Stop these foolish things. You know, in one of the camps, we are told when we are being told about the relationship, but I don't know how we can say here in this country, people will argue about their relationship. But there in Kenya, we are told, feed that sister with a long spoon. Feed her with a long spoon. Yeah. But yet, with a long spoon. Even if it's your fiancé, feed her with a long. Keep at it. Even we have been told the COVID situation is keeping distance. Social distance. Even in this situation, keep social distance. Uh, six feet apart. And then you can give testimony. If you touch me, no. Pastor Mesema, Pastor Mesema, he body in the temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep all your hands, put them in your pocket and walk away. And I, may the Lord bless you. And put also your mask. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh my. Avoid that TV show or movie which is born in nature. Avoid that TV show, TV games, or TV, or TV movie, or going to a movie which is born in nature. You are destroying your own minds. You are destroying your own minds. Keep your mind and spirit from being polluted. Dr. David Jeremiah will say it is self-destructing. Self-control enables you not to destroy yourself. Don't put, you know, the other guy in Kenya, not here. I think people here do not smoke, but in Kenya some people smoke. And we are being preached at and say, how, how, how foolish are you? 
How foolish are you? This is a This is a five dollar bill, eh? In Kenya money is how many? Five hundred. So imagine you have got five hundred in your pocket, and then you go to buy things that will destroy your lung instead of buying food. Why can't you even buy pizza? Or even a soda? Although a soda is not also very good. Why don't why don't you even buy a gift? I mean Buy something profitable. Do not pollute your mind. Again, I don't know whether you like this also. Avoid that person. Avoid a gossiper. Avoid somebody, you, whether you are girls or boys, avoid pray boys or pray girls for that matter. Avoid the accuser of brethren. Avoid the planter of seeds of divisions and seeds of discords. Paul told Timothy, for such kind of people, have nothing to do with them. Have nothing to do with them. Act like Joseph. I don't know Joseph to go now also. Act like Joseph. Joseph acted wisely. In, 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 in Genesis 39, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, how can I do such a wicked, in other words, how can I do such a foolish thing and sin against God? And those he spoke to Joseph day by day, you know Joseph has every reason to respond. One thing he has been sold by his brother. He has been tortured. He has been done all manner of things. And here, there is a shawasho shiaha. There is something from washo which has come to me. And I am a man. And everything, everything is permissible to me. But not everything is profitable. But Joseph is tortured. He had meant to torture. Spiritual torture. He could ask God, God, why are you when I'm being sold to, as a slave? From a house of Jacob to being a slave. Where are you, God? And then a woman come and say, you know, I see you. I die. Hmm? And then he says to this woman, how can I do such a wicked, foolish thing and sin against God? And those he spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her, delete her phone or his phone. When he calls, nyoga he your phone. <laughs> Have nothing to do with him or her. You'll be saved. I cannot hear. I know he meant today. If I was saying deliverance, and one of them would be great. Delete his number or her number. Nyonga he or number he keep Peter. Message when it comes, don't read it, delete it. Have nothing to do with him or her or be near her. Why do I say this? You know, uh, delete or quit or break such relationship. They do not add value. Why am I saying that so that I can conclude? So that I can conclude and say, Joseph, in one way or the other, because he was a dreamer, he knew God had planted something greater than five or ten or an hour pressure. He knew. High calling. So he could not, the vision he had was greater than a mere illicit relationship with a man, another man's wife. He knew this is danger. He knew this is foolishness. And he had the seeds of greatness. He must have studied Abraham. He answered his grandfather. And he must have known what God had told his, grand, his grandfather about his life. A man of faith. So he being a man of faith, he knew Yahweh. And Yahweh existed everywhere. Let me tell you, you guys, you have got the potential to becoming great in this country. The seeds God has planted in us are great. And I've always been giving myself an example. I got saved when I was a young man. I will not tell you how many years. But if I could have messed in Machango Teachers College, maybe I could not be here. I could not be having the family I have. I could not be having the name I have. God saw it from very far. And God has seen it in you as well. Do not abort that plan of God. Do not abort that blessing God has for you. 
Avenge such kind of person. Delete na nyonga akipiga uh, akimwambia tunakutana babi nyonga unasema I am busy. You can write even your WhatsApp profile uh, not even Christ centered but I am busy so that when he reads or she reads he realize there is another person to joke around with. Hata move ni kosa kunipenda mimi bado na wapenda. I still love you guys. Ni sasa ni sema mimi hata hii message hata mimi ni kiyo. Okay I'm also foolish at some time but have to be wiser now more than ever before. Somebody will say, I know you have challenges by, to make choices. Young people here in this country, they have got challenges to make choices. But you are not drugged to those choices. You take yourself. You can refuse to belong to a gang. You can refuse to belong to anything that you know it is not beneficial. The challenge is valid with time. But let me tell you, the consequence of what the, the damage that will be caused are hard to contain. Some situations and acts leaves wounds that are hard to heal. Scars that remain for life, psychologically or emotional or spiritual or whatever. You may be called names, young men. We will also call names. You can also be called names. Where well, when you are coward, you are outdated. Where ni mshamba, where mshamba sana, where mkenya. But eventually you get the certificate and you move forward and you get your freedom. Lives ahead in freedom. Praise the name of the living God. When you make the right choices and you never regret it. Consequences of us are that you were stored because you have acted against your own interest. You have failed God. You have lost an opportunity of greatness of fighting your enemy. When Adam will beat you instead of you beating him. Now on, you will be at war. I would say these words. I have taken a lot of time. And the Bible says in verse 9, the eye of the Lord. This verse is said in a situation of a crisis. Meaning, no problem can arise for God's people or a person of which the Lord is not able or not aware of or is not able to solve or to deliver. Taking like as a predicament. God can do anything, can solve your problem whichever way. That he will deliver and he will, pro he will deliver you provided your heart and your mind or our hearts are fully committed to the Lord. Now, may this eye, let's stand on our feet. May this eye of the Lord locate us somewhere. This eye of the Lord that is moving around, may it locate you. Can somebody say amen? May it locate us in a place of wisdom or a situation of wisdom where we are making good acts. We are in line with his will. May this eye of the Lord locate you in circumstances of glory and kingdom interest. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things shall be added to you. May this eye of the Lord locate you in a prayer meeting, in a Bible study, in prayer and fasting, in worshiping. May, it, may this eye of the Lord find you, making a difference in the eyes of the Lord. May this eye of the Lord locate you when you are hearing his voice of prophecy and obeying it. May this eye of the Lord locate you, fighting the good fight of faith and winning battles in your life. May this eye of the Lord locate you, running the race with wisdom. And if you are building the kingdom, you are using the materials of gold, silver, and precious stone. May this eye of the Lord locate you with a great reward. May this eye of the Lord locate you when you are at the right side of God and walking together with him. May this eye locate us this afternoon. How many want the eye of the Lord to locate us in the right places and receiving the same blessing? We shall be of avoided foolish things and foolish acts and acted in wisdom. On Sunday I will come, the Sunday I will have an opportunity, I will come with a message of wisdom. Amen? And so we can balance that too. Amen. May the Lord bless us and strengthen us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, enable us to vacate from instances 
and situations that are foolish, that may cost us our lives, that may cost us fortunes, that may cost our destiny. Remember us to act in the right way. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and he had prosperity, he had greatness, he had grace, O oh God. But when he defeated, he started having fights and challenges in life that he could not manage. And help us to be on the right side of life and in the light with you, dear Father, because you are the author and finisher of all that which is good, which is right in your eyes. We pray, dear Father, to strengthen us and guide us and ground us firmly in your will so that we can fulfill that which you have called us and you want us to experience in your will. Because we pray and believe through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses our human understanding keep your hearts and mind with the knowledge of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.